Janelle Boyer and I am an associate professor in health science at Keene State and this is my daughter. Do you want to say your name? Ella. This is Ella. Ella May Francis. E-L-L-A. <laughs> there you have it. And we are doing a video for Global FPIES Day to update you about um, my research project that is looking into the connections between the gut microbiome and FPIES. Um, Ella here is my inspiration, so she has FPIES and as an infant was allergic to just about everything that I ate through breast milk and started to thrive once she was on hypoallergenic formula. Um, we've been slowly trialing foods. We've been trialing foods ever since and she's making a lot of great headway with new foods. Um, so since Ella's diagnosis, I have been interested in looking into a connection between the microbiome and FPIES. I have a background in microbiology and have always been very excited about the gut microbiome. So in 2015, I started a study, an IRB approved study at Keene State College with some funding from Keene State and the FPIES Foundation and support from Ubiome. And we gathered about 70 participants, half had FPIES, half did not, and we looked at just infants under the age of 12 months old. And we are finally in the process of getting some results. I think last year I updated on our survey data. Um, we did see more antibiotic usage in FPIES mothers while pregnant and in FPIES infants compared to the non-allergic non babies. And this year we're starting to get some results from the microbiome. And we are seeing some differences in the gut microbiome of FPIES infants compared to allergy-free infants. Um, the diversity is similar, so one thing that we like to look at is how diverse the gut microbes are, and yeah. we're seeing we're seeing some similar similar made. results in diversity. I made. Yeah. And I have some banana. <laughs> Ella wants to show a ring that she found. Yeah, nice. There's a tree on there. Yeah. Hold on one second, let me keep going. Let's see. Yeah, very nice, Ella. We are finding um, that there are some different species of bacteria that are more common in FPIES ba babies compared to the allergy-free babies. And we even found one that was a little more common in the allergy-free compared to the FPIES. Um, we'll be presenting results at the American College for uh, Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology annual scientific meeting in Boston at the end of the month and the end of October. Um, and that abstract will be published at the end of the month in October. Um, meanwhile, we're also recruiting participants still uh, for a toddler study. So comparing the gut microbiome between uh, kids who have FPIES compared to kids who have outgrown FPIES and kids who are allergy free. And we'll be, doing, be putting a call out. We actually need participants in all groups again. So we'll be putting a call out yeah. soon. And then that's always like soon. Yeah, <laughs> um, but we're excited um, to continue this research. And um, strawberries, I like. Oh yeah, Ella just tried strawberries today for the first time, and she really likes them. So that's our food trial for the week. <laughs> um, um, but I was gonna say, so oftentimes when I mentioned that I've seen differences in antibiotic usage and things like that, you know, some parents will say, "Oh, I never used antibiotics," or others will feel guilty because they use antibiotics. Um, to me, that's just evidence that the microbiome might play a role. I definitely don't think it is the only cause of FPIES. Um, and again, we didn't see any one particular bacteria that was definitely the cause of FPIES, but we are seeing some differences. So the gut microbiome, you know, all the microbes that live in the gut, are it's very complex and there are a lot of things that factor into it. And it seems that there are a lot of environmental things in our society that are contributing to um, less diverse and kind of unusual um, bacteria that are found in the gut and, and really in other places as well. Um, but over the years, over the generations, because of more antibiotic usage and hand sanitizer and the type of food that we eat and less exposure to the outdoors, um, my hypothesis is that we're just seeing uh, changes in the microbiome over time and that the microbiome might be a, a factor in the progression of FPIES. Yeah. And it's my turn yet. Oh yeah, Elle, is there anything you would like to say about your FPIES or about your allergies or? So um, 
Maybe about your strawberries? What's your favorite food? Raspberries and strawberries and um, I was a little allergic to everything when I was a baby. I and I was is it is it is it, Are you allergic to everything now? No. Can you eat a lot of things? What's your favorite food? Strawberries. Strawberries. Raspberries. <laughs> and raspberries. All right. And, well. Um, um, uh, it's like 10 months. My dad's coming home any minute. And I, I, and Zeppi, what do you want it to Zeppi? Yeah, Ella's trying to invite the dog to be part of our video. All right, Ella, I'm going to say, yep. say bye-bye to everyone. Bye. Um, I think that's pretty much for our and update. So, Oh, hold um, on, hold on one second and I'm going to finish. Um, but we plan on keeping this research going. Um, I've got some funding through a, a group, uh, an NIH funded um, group in New Hampshire, the New Hampshire INBRI, which is a group of um, um, support for uh, faculty at small colleges um, doing biomedical research. Um, we're looking at applying for some new grants. Um, hopefully going, I'll be going on sabbatical soon and have even more time to do research. But I'm very thankful for the whole FPIES community and for the FPIES Foundation. Um, yeah, yeah, and, and from, from all the support from all the families and all the participants in the project. So thank you all and best wishes to you. I'll say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye.